Hey y'all, Uncle Jimmy here. When you speak for yourself, you're forced to think for yourself. And when you think for yourself, the sports world looks different. In order to enjoy this podcast and this show, you need to have the courage to look at the world from alternative points of view and not be offended when you disagree. Speak for Yourself isn't your Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram feed. SFY tells you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So, welcome aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. We start today with some huge NFL news out of Oakland. According to Adam Schefter, the Raiders are planning to suspend Antonio Brown, who reportedly had an altercation with general manager Mike Mayock yesterday after Brown posted and complained about Mayock's letter informing the receiver he was being fined for missing practice. According to the NFL's network, Ian Rappaport, Brown said he would punch Mayock in the face, punted a ball, and shouted, find me for that. Rappaport also reported that a suspension could cost A.B. $30 million in guaranteed money. Uh, look, I've been saying uh, throughout the offseason, I don't think A.B. wants to play football anymore. Mm. <laughs> and he's been doing a bunch of things in succession to keep screaming, I really don't want to play football. Uh, but that's my narrative. It's been my narrative. What do you all think? And Marcel, let's start us off. What do you think this latest incident says about Antonio Brown? Um, I, I, I've been in the process, if you've been watching me, uh, sitting at this table, starting to eat my crow in defense. Man, you've been defending him the whole time. <laughs> Look, he's a little light in the pockets right now, maybe to the tune of $30 million because of this temper tantrum he threw. And I'm going to be a little light in the pockets because I'm returning the retainer <laughs> for being his defense attorney for eight damn months. This guy is full of himself. And that's something we throw around a lot, but we don't see it a lot. Like, to this dose, to this level. When you are trying to play the ultimate team sport as an individual, and I've been on some teams with some divas, some Hall of Famers, too, that did it their way. But I've not seen it done this way, and it ever turns into success for not only the team, but even the player. Like, to derail yourself this far off of what is central to what a team needs in terms of your performance and your personality is really defeating. So, I'm sorry, uh, Antonio Brown, but new evidence gives me new information, which gives me a new outlook towards what he's trying to do. And right now, I think he's a man lost. He's not living in reality. That's just period. The crazy thing, though, when you look at the letter that Mike Mayock, sincerely, Mike Mayock, <laughs> <laughs> so, he was right. trying to let him know, I want to be friendly. Yeah. You, you got to understand, when you do what he did, the cryotherapy, you can't practice, the helmet fiasco, oh, we got that situated. Oh, now it's another problem with the helmet. When they came out and said either you all in or you all out, that he should have known right then and there, they not playing with me no more. Say it. And so for you, okay, you post, I don't know exactly what happened today. Did Mayock say something to him about posting it on his Instagram? Or did he say, I don't know how that happened, but you gotta understand, they not playing with you no more. Live in reality, understand this could be all wiped. This $30 million you got is all gone now. You got a family, you got, you're gonna regret this <laughs> five years. You, Oof. Look at the guys before you. Look at T.O. They put him out the league. Probably could have played a couple more years. I played with Chad, who I believe was more talented than Antonio Brown. He only played 11 years mm. because of Ant. Learn from the people that came before you. He's not living in reality, and it's going to bite him in the butt, and he's going to regret it four to five years from now. Mm. I'm going to take a tad bit of a different approach to this and a different angle. I think Mike Mayock and John Gruden have to do something that may or may not have happened in Pittsburgh. I think they have to take a step back and see Antonio Brown as a human. <laughs> okay? Come think, on, bro. Hold on now. Hold on. Come hold on, on, bro. Hold on, hold on. Okay, follow I'm, me. Follow I'm, me here. I'm follow sorry. me I think they're not seeing him at I, I think, Hold on. I think he's... I, I'm, I'm just being 100% honest. I deal with a lot of situations where people cry out for help in a lot of different ways, guys. Yeah. They cry out for help, and it doesn't matter how much money you're being paid, it doesn't matter how rich, how poor, what your racial background is, it does not matter. People have different ways of crying out for help, and when it's not, when it's not addressed properly, and it's, it's brushed and pushed into the wind, and it's only self-agendas that are, are taking place, and Vault. that are... 
I'm just being LeVar, honest. LeVar, I, LeVar. I think I, this is a serious situation we here. We can be honest, but yes. we can also be honest looking at things from the other direction in terms okay. of have you not seen people who cry out for help but reject all help? Yes. Mm -hmm. and yes. So, and mm -hmm. maybe that is what's taking and, place. No, no, no. no that's no, what's not happening. Maybe that is. Yeah, that's not, not a baby. Come on, they've man. been dealing with this all offseason. Yeah. That's fair. I guarantee you they've tried. We've seen John Gruden basically get on they his knees. They supported him over a helmet for months and months and months. They've I'm, been I, trying again, to help him. We're, we're looking at it from a very surface standpoint. I think that what's going on with A.B. and what he's... The, the, the episodes that are taking place and what we're seeing is something that may be far more serious than, than what we're able to, to experience from our vantage point. Well, let's talk about it. When you say crying out for help. Sure. What undermines that in this situation is what all parents know. When you're learning to rear your child, that there are developmental stages. So you have to meet your child where they are instead of saying, hey, I'm trying to prepare you for this real world, but you're talking to a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. Look, if you take a monster truck from my son, the world has just caved in on him. Mm -hmm. He's three. When you look at Antonio Brown, who went from a six-round draft choice, mm -hmm. who was understated, who now has turned into this guy, Guess what? We have watched you do the developmental stages. And where you are right now is not the time to cry out for help because if you were really seeking help, that would have been in other dis desperate the times. The problem with your statement is six-round pick. Went to a small college. Maybe he's been crying out for help and maybe that, that situation has been escalating and it did not matter until he got to a point of where he was making the type of money that he was making to where he was getting the type of attention that he's been LeVar, receiving. LeVar, the only thing... And, and I get it because I am... I, A.B. definitely needs help. Yeah, we know but that. But John Gruden and Mike Mayock and the Oakland Raiders can't stop what they're doing right now to give it to him. But they've invested in him. Uh, he's I their big, it. he's their largest investment. If it's me, and I'm just speaking that for me. That investment is done. You got to take, well, you maybe got, it hey, is, maybe hey, it hey, isn't. Sometimes when you invest, you got to say, I got to cut, cut your my losses. losses. And Derek I got to cut my losses. I got to get from out under And it. that may very we well be what Derek it is. Carr is their largest investment, not Antonio uh, Brown. I'm talking dollars yeah, here. Okay, now, that's, I'm talking that's, dollars here. Uh, <laughs> look, A.B., has been, in my view, I've been saying this for a long time as well, ever since I read Jesse Washington's story more than a year ago for The Undefeated, his addiction to Instagram, his addiction to social media, his constant need to perform and do things for retweets, likes, follows. We've seen, a, I'm seeing a lot of young people's whose brains have been hacked. They're do if you watch 60 Minutes, if you, if you really follow the news, they've been writing, talking about exposing what these smartphones are doing to people. And we're looking at a guy that's a prime example of this thing going haywire. Everything AB does is a staged performance. It's based I'm off of self-worth. It's a lack. He has a lack of self-worth worth and a, a lack of self-identity. We may look at him He will and say, completely disagree with you on it. And, and that's fine because I don't <laughs> think he, he even knows. And I think that that's, that's what makes this even more important that we look at it from a different perspective and a different lens. Like, it's easy to condemn like him. Maybe I'm wrong. When anybody has a problem, it's, oh, he needs help with this. This, prob this is just who he is. Mm. He got away with it for so long that he thinks it's okay. Like, we can't every time something happens, oh, he needs this. Oh, he needs help. Oh, he got away with it in Pittsburgh for so long that you think wherever I go, because I can play and I'm a baller, I can continue to get away with it. And you know that's how it was, works. But he was not the main guy for a lot of years in Pittsburgh. He was, he was like the third guy at one point. How many years did he play in Pittsburgh? A couple years. He was the main guy enough. in Pittsburgh for seven years. Yeah, that's, that's a that's, long that's, that's time. That's after the fact. That's after the fact. It was it's enabled... In Pittsburgh, they've, create, it's, they've created Frankenstein. Again, I go back to, go read the story, because this isn't just football. He's having problems interacting with other human beings. It's throughout his life. It's pervasive. And at some point, you can't blame Mike Tomlin. You can't blame John Gruden. You can't blame Mike Mayock, Ben Roethlisberger. This is on A.B. He's 31 years old. 
He accepted the responsibility of being a franchise player in Pittsburgh and Oakland. He can't live up to the responsibilities. That's on him. Yeah, I don't look I, at it as a blame. Well, well I, 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 I do, actually. I do, I do. I do. You got to take some of the blame yeah. when you're a professional. Look, every coach I ever played for always would tell us that being in the NFL is not a birthright. It's a privilege. And when your privileges all of a sudden in your mind become norm, it's a privilege. This is of luxury to have this existence. When you start to think that's norm, now you're out of touch. You're out of reality. And you won't act the same because you think this is what comes with the territory. You have to earn this. It is not the place of the NFL or organization for it all of a sudden to say, pause on what we're doing here in terms of football to now fix all of your personal issues when we expect you to either use our resources to fix those issues or be able to compartmentalize, handle football, and let's handle that together. When you want to prioritize you over what we're here to do, now you're out of touch. Hey guys, this is Jason Whitlock from Speak For Yourself. Are you ready for what's ahead? You can't always predict the future, but you can game plan for it. Generations of families and businesses have harnessed the power of Pacific to help them reach their unique goals. Whether you need to save enough money to meet your needs, ensure your family is protected, or make sure you don't run out of money, Pacific Life has a variety of financial solutions that can help. Pacific Life counts more than half of the 100 largest U.S. companies as its clients and has been named one of the 2019 world's most ethical companies by the Ethisphere Institute. Protecting what matters most to people for 150 years and counting? That's the power of Pacific. Ask a financial professional about how Pacific Life can help you game plan for the future or visit PacificLife.com. TJ Hushmanzada and LeVar Arrington are back. Time now for a big story. Let's return to Antonio Brown, who the Raiders are reportedly planning to suspend after the receiver got into an altercation with general manager Mike Mayock. The fight is just the latest episode in AB's summer-long soap opera that featured a hot air balloon ride, some mm. burned-up feet, and a social media post of a letter Mayock sent him about being fined for missing practices. Speaking of Mayock, here he is not too long ago talking about A.B. Antonio Brown's not in the building today. He won't be practicing. Uh, I don't have any more information for you right now. And when I have some and it becomes appropriate, you guys all get it, I promise you. But that's it for today. All right, most people are speculating that the Raiders are looking for a way out and are done with Antonio Brown. Obvious question, what should they do? And also, is Antonio Brown's NFL career likely over? Mm. Got to get this out the way. Mike Mayock looking like Obama did before and after the two presidents. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, how long has been there? He? Boy, oh, this is showing. He, he tied up in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what should they do with Antonio Brown? We know. The, it's the obvious. Got to let him go. Um, there are 52 other guys who just potentially learned a new way if you allow this, if you enable this. Like, mm. oh, wait a minute. The path of least resistance? Antonio Brown got away with what? I'm not going to get away with what Antonio Brown got away with, but I just inst uh, stepped closer to that because that's the new way. Mm. Now, we all know when there's a new sheriff in town, whether it's the GM or it's the coach, they always look to make a statement. They pick the highest-ranking player they can find that's expendable, and they say, I got to make an example out of you to set the new tone. And damn it, Antonio Brown volunteers for that role when he doesn't qualify. It's usually someone much lower on the rung than an Antonio Brown. But now, if you Mike Mayock, new sheriff, you're like, here we go. This is what I got to do. So Antonio Brown put himself in a position where I don't think he has any leverage. I mean, you can't even come back, I don't think, and say, I'm sorry, I'll be different. You've been warned. There was a proclamation made. The world heard it, except you. So now, if I'm on that team, I'm like, if you don't let him go, oh, don't expect to have us. He got to go. <laughs> it's, if, it's, if they can get out from under this contract, it's 100% he's good as gone. If they can't, they're going to try to figure out certain ways to suspend him. You notice anybody that has that in them that's a lower-level player, if they don't do something about this, if they get anywhere near Antonio Brown, it's coming out. Mm -hmm. It's coming... They discipline them, they get rid of them, that will never come out because they saw, oh, they wasn't playing with Antonio Brown, who they perceive as the best player. Yep. He has got to go. 
you know it. it it's almost they bought low. It didn't work. Cut your losses and move on. The bottom line here is that they invested in that man. That's what y'all failed to, to, to mention in your, your points. Gruden, Mayock, both new, relatively new. You bring this guy in as your high profile, this is our major signing, which means you had to do the homework, which means you had to do the preparation, just like in the draft board. You made this decision. This is hinges on their, their job security just as much as it does on Antonio Brown. Huh? No. Sur- no. Certainly certainly does. 10, 10 years, $100 million deal. You talking about job does. security? Certainly. certainly. It's, it's, it's big enough. 10 we years. Love you, man. We love you too uh, much uh, to say that. Stop Come that. On. So, so, here, so, so here's the point. Here's the point. The reality of it is, is that this is a high stakes game of poker that's taking place. And it's not about getting from underneath A.B. It's about hoping that we did something that actually reaches A.B. where we can almost salvage what we did by making this decision. It might sound ridiculous to you, but I'm I'm willing to guarantee you Uh they're hoping that taking a solid stance where he loses the type of money that he's lost by putting him in the position where you've backed him all the way into the corner when he didn't think that he could be put in the corner, and they're hoping that he He comes back and he repents from it. He doesn't want to play. That could be possible. He doesn't want to play football. It's possible. I'm going to tell you that the other thing that I think we're missing here is it's being framed as A.B. and Mike Mayock. And I guarantee you, the reason we've reached this point, it's A.B. and John Gruden. And John Gruden is making Mayock be the fall guy, be the face. Yes, Mm -hmm. Mayock's the face because just keep in mind, Mm -hmm. uh, all of you guys, just really listen to what was described here. A.B. threatened to punch Mike Mayock in the face and then punted the ball and said, find me. Just... And again, I know to some people that sounds horrible, but when you've experienced football the way y'all have, you've seen much worse, much, much worse. And so to me, this sounds like a cover story and there's been a level of abuse and embarrassment that John Gruden has experienced that's never made it publicly yet. And that's why they're getting rid of A.B. That's why they're tired because right now, I think Mayock, they're, to me, Gruden and Mayock are, have had their reputations damaged just by getting in bed with him. But the most damage has been to Mayock so far, and that's the way John Gruden wants this to play out. And that's true partnership, and that's how you, you're supposed to play it when you're really a partner. Co-hosting with you, Whitlock, if there's something that needs to be done that I know that I can take the hits for versus you and vice versa, I'm taking them. All day. I did that in football as well. I used to go up to our executives and general manager all the time. And I was talking for them. Mm-hmm. And they was like, Marcellus, they can't cut you, so go say it. And I was like, oh, man, that happens so much. Oh, man, yes. that's what I used to do. Yes. That was my role. So guess what? When I look at this, John Gruden is saying, I don't need another Keyshawn Johnson on my hands. My reputation doesn't need that again. I suspended Keyshawn Johnson for the year, and, and he was gone. Do I need that again? Because then the common denominator becomes me. How about these isolated receivers that are just getting out of hand? So let me put it on them. But Mayock, you don't have that on your resume. You have equity in that position. Go out there and handle the dirty work for him. But he dealt with him long enough to get a Super Bowl with him, with Mm -hmm. a team that he didn't build. You know, and and, and the reality, and I'm speaking of Gruden with with Keyshawn. Yeah, we get it. And and listen, I I respect your guys' opinions, but you're still basing it off of of speculation. You're, You're basing it off of theory. It's a theory that you guys are coming up with. I don't know for certain that A.B. doesn't want to play. I don't know for certain that, that John Gruden feels his reputation has been damaged or something's going to come Bar. out. I don't know that for Aren't certain. Aren't you in your 40s? Yes, I am. You have learned <laughs> to judge people by their actions, not their words. Again, again. A.B.'s actions are screaming out. He don't give a damn about football. It could be that, but it might not be based upon football. It could be based upon something else. It could Whatever. Be something. His actions are screaming Whatever's going on in his personal life has made football not a priority, and he's being paid like he's a priority. But the problem is, is that they made the decision to bring him to Oakland. And it knowing doesn't, that if that, you can get out of it, you face. get out of it. I think if that they feel You can though. rid yourself of this problem. You rid that's yourself. Fair. You, you have to. This, but I don't know that that's where what they're happens at. Is, what happens tonight? NFL season kicks off. This Sunday, everybody else will play. 
The show goes on, man. Oh, the, the it show goes you, on. You look I, I want to I'm 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 throw out one other thing that we got to be a little bit quick on. I think, to me, and I, I was here on Keyshawn John, uh, on Terrell Owens, uh, same. This behavior to me should cost Antonio Brown the Hall of Fame. Oh wow! Oh no, I ain't going there. Oh, Hell wow. no, you can't take that out the bag. Um, once it's in there, it's secure. It's Was and he a lock prior to this? For me, yeah. I mean, he had I a five-year stress yeah. that no NFL receivers ever. The had. Pittsburgh Steelers six win years, Super excuse me, Bowls. Excuse me, six years. They never won six one with AB on the roster. The, he, de- he embarrassed Mike Tomlin, Ben Roethlisberger. This guy's a destructive force in football. The Steelers never won a Super Bowl with him, and now he goes and tears this thing up in Oakland that quick. No Hall of Fame. Chris Carter didn't win one. T.O. didn't win one. Randy Moss didn't win one. I'm not going there. Stop Chris that. Carter wasn't the reason the Vikings uh, 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 didn't win. Oh, in your eyes. But um, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> like, I wasn't there. But I know he ain't got... Me and him, same guys. <laughs> Y'all got the same He's a way better player. Yeah. Let me say this. I'm going to pivot real quick to answer it in this way. This is why he got to go. I was here. I was there in Dallas when Bill Parcells got into a fight with Antonio Bryant in front of the team. And just this Wednesday, Mike Mayock gets into a fight with Antonio Brown in front of the team. The spider senses went off. Boy, let me just tell you one I've thing. I've seen coach and player get in a fight and nothing happened to the player. Yeah. With my own eyes. Yeah, and look, Bill Parcells was in Dallas for four years. Three of them were winning seasons. One wasn't, and it was the year he had a fight with Antonio Bryant. You lose something, and Antonio stayed on our roster for like six weeks. And the entire six weeks, we were like... That's how you don't let this happen? <laughs> you ain't that tough I after thought all. she was the big tuna. This is how it goes now? Interesting. That was the only year that Bill Parcells didn't have a winning season in Dallas. My point is this. I do not want anything to happen to the player, Antonio Brown, but he forced our hand. He's forcing hands. He's forced their yeah, hand. Forcing so hands. now he got to go or else you're going to have to deal with them circumstances. Hall of Fame being goes Man, get as well. Out. It, it, for me... I didn't know if he was... He's a Hall of Famer, talent-wise. But the way they're acting, to mm-hmm. me, you once you go to the Raiders, if you can have those type of numbers that you had in Pittsburgh, it's 100% no question. I think it will be one of those, is he going to make offense. it, is he not? I yeah. think it's a fence yeah. discussion. A fence? And the reason yeah, I, the re, the reason I say this is, and y'all going to call me a homer. I am. Chad should be in the Hall of... If A.B. get in the Hall of Fame, Chad should get in the Hall of Fame as well. I don't disagree Chad's the most that. talented receiver I've ever seen. Talent that. don't and get I you in the And I put him in the same bucket. Oh, Both so there you go. Both forces, not Hall of Famers. And I don't know that Chad was... I, I got to go with you on this, Whit. You said he might be the worst diva in the worst... in, 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 in the history. I may have to... You gave your retainer back. I may have to... to Re, re, you know, take back what I said. He could, this latest could have put him in that category. It, it and could have. the worst have. diva doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. Well, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Six years? I wouldn't years? say that. Was it 1,200 yards yeah. plus? It was unreal. And at least 100 catches? No and we Super now Bowl. saying, oh, you go, that didn't he had, count. He had all the pieces and no Super Bowl. It's a strike against him. I'd rather do have what he the, did. Than, no, that's fine. And be lesser and get the Super Bowls. You and no Hall of Fame. So Julian Edelman's in the Hall of Fame for all those Super Bowls. He's close. Oh, oh my God! You co-host. You co-host. Oh my God! Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. It's time to celebrate. Football is finally back, and DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy football, has huge Week One contests. The first one starts this Thursday night when Chicago and Green Bay kick off the season in a single-game showdown with $2.5 million in total prizes up for grabs. Plus, new users who sign up today on DraftKings using code SPEAK will receive a free shot at the $1 million top prize. Nothing adds to the sweat of watching the game quite like having a shot at a $1 million payday. Get in on the season opener action, download the DraftKings app now, and use the code SPEAK for a limited time. Both new and existing users can get a deposit bonus up to $500. And new users don't miss this extra special week one bonus. Enter my code SPEAK, S-P-E-A-K, to get a free shot at the $1 million with your first deposit. That's code SPEAK, only at DraftKings. Make it rain. Joined once again by TJ Husmanzada and LeVar Arrington. All right, let's talk some LeBron James. A couple of weeks ago, I upset the LBA community 
LeBron apologist community. Mm. When I said their leader, LeBron James, suffers from fame and social media addiction. In the aftermath of LeBron's Hey Look at Me annex at his son's AAU game, I said fame is an addiction more dangerous than cocaine. Nate Burleson <laughs> and other members of the LBA community rushed to the internet to <laughs> preach to the world that LeBron is a good daddy. Nate, dog. <laughs> he take care of his kids. Well, at the risk of upsetting LBAers, <laughs> I'm going to once again point out that the latest of the latest example of the negative side effects of LeBron's addiction to fame. The 34-year-old basketball star claims to have identified football's most unique challenge and further claims to have invented a solution. Glass helmets. Players being inside a helmet and them not having no voice and no one knowing who they are because of the helmet and, and no one ever truly knowing that there's actually a person inside there and not taking that seriously. They will be seen by uninterrupted. And this right here is the first glass helmet. And the meaning behind it is all these great athletes that play our wonderful sport of football will be heard and will be seen because they are, at the end of the day, they are people as well uh, when they take these helmets off. And there are people when they have the helmets on as well. So. Uh, when I first saw this, I thought it was a comedy skit. Mm. I thought LeBron was having some fun. And then I watched a four-minute YouTube video titled The Glass Helmet Project, tackling one of football's most unique challenges. Oh, sweet Jesus. I think LeBron is serious. LeBron's sidekick, Maverick Carter, some nondescript former NFL player, Andrew Hawkins, and an artist are pushing the notion that glass helmets or symbolic glass helmets would liberate and humanize oppressed NFL players. I could walk down the street, be the star of a football team, and nobody knows who I am. Because people don't recognize you. As players, we're kind of looked at as warriors or gladiators, right? And, and gladiators aren't people who you remember their name. I think a lot of people, when it comes to football, they cheer for the laundry in the sense that they root for their teams more than having a direct connection with the players. Hopefully one day we'll see glass helmets on the field. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know, man. Back in college, man, stop. I experimented with marijuana. Uh -oh. Don't do it, kids. It's a waste of time. Nope, we either, is day. overrated. But what LeBron is doing here reminds me of what we used to do in college. There were a handful of serious smokers on the football team, and they'd call me and be like, Big Will, come over. <laughs> Big Will. We got that purple dank. I Straight from uh, Cali. Dang. Ooh, wee. Ooh, wee. <laughs> That's how LeBron feels about fame. He's calling NFL players. Antonio, A.B., come over, dog. <laughs> me and Mav got that do do, -do. This glass helmet going to increase your fame 20 times over. Mm. See? When you're addicted to something, you think everybody would be happier if they were addicted to it, too. LeBron would be shocked to learn that not everyone wants to be famous. In fact, most people don't want to be famous. Oh, they might like a little hit of fame once or twice a year. It's cool. But on a day-to-day -day basis, most people just want to be left alone to enjoy their family and friends in anonymity. Besides, football isn't broken. It's three to five times more popular than basketball. No one has a problem recognizing Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, J.J. Watt, Von Miller, Zeke mm. Elliott, Drew Brees, Odell Beckham Jr., Baker Mayfield, Cam Newton, Eli Manning. Do I need to go on? No one knows anyone in college basketball. You recognize these guys? Trevor Lawrence, Jalen Hurts, touchdown Tua, mm. LeBron. Put the pipe and the glass helmet down. Sit down at your kid's game. <laughs> Stop with the Taco Tuesday foolishness. This commentary isn't an elaborate metaphor, LeBron. Your brain is on fame. Mm. Just say no. All right, guys, Marcellus, get us started. You really get us started. You already <laughs> got us started. <laughs> MC Hammer started. Is this proof <sighs> LeBron's addicted to fame? <sighs> Look, all right, let me just acknowledge the elephant in the room. What the hell is this transparent resin glass helmet? I mean, it makes <laughs> no sense, but it actually does land somewhere, and the blame is not his fame or his seeking of fame. I blame business, and I blame Hollywood, and this is why. 
If anybody's ever had an idea, if anyone's ever thought of a business, thought of a product, the first thing they want to know beyond the idea is who's your team. Then to get traction, that team has to activate, usually in celebrity or in fame, to make it get traction. LeBron James is guilty of being only one thing, not fame controlled, not social media controlled. He's King Midas. Mm -hmm. And when King Midas has the Midas touch, everything he's a part of gets traction. Everything he's a part of basically gets greenlit regardless of concept. So this is what has happened to That's LeBron. I I've seen I've been in too many pitch meetings. You can say the best thing in the world. So who's associated with that? If you say LeBron James, or better yet, LeBron James is the one saying it to you, OK, what do we have to do? We're, we're, we're involved. We're, we're engaged. And so since he's King Midas, and I will be as guilty as him, when you got the Midas touch, you touch everything, even if it doesn't make any sense. So I'm not blaming social media. I'm not blaming fame. I'm blaming the fact that this dude could do no wrong, even when he does something like this that seems wrong. Mm. To answer your question, is he addicted to fame, I have to say no. And the reason I say that is there hasn't been an athlete in the history of sports that ha that's more famous than LeBron James. Yeah. I mean, he can go in any city in America, across the country, Bill and he's... Gates, he, Bill Gates don't want no more money. And he, but <laughs> Warren Buffett don't want no more You said, money. is he addicted to fame? No, no, he's no, no, no. already famous. No, I got and, it. And so this helmet thing is not going to work. I mean, it's catchy. It's like, ah, oh, because once you put the ear pads and everything else in it, you know, we're still in the same you know what, situation. You, you know what Hugh Hefner did? Uh-oh. Oh, I done had enough Playboy bunnies. I don't need no more. <laughs> or did he say, bring me some more? <laughs> of course. The next, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> LeBron, it, you, that's you, the addiction. <laughs> I got some family that used to like crack. They couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I, I've had enough. Yeah, it's like, no, more. I want more. more. Fame. I don't see how much bigger <laughs> he can get from that perspective. It's, you we, think Steve Ballmer don't want more if, money? If you really think about this, and mm -hmm. I'm sure they thought, once you put all the ear pads and everything else, you're in the same helmet. Well, no, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. And Who the knows? logos. He, he's, <laughs> and the logos. They're saying it's a metaphor, <laughs> that right. it's not reality. But again, you heard Maverick. They didn't make Hope. it sound like it was. I thought it was a metaphor, but it. it they're, say, they're making it sound like they want guys to be in clear helmets. <laughs> are we getting catfished up here? I mean, I, are I, we getting no, catfished? No, this they're 100% saying that. Oh. And, and first first and right. foremost, let's, let's, start, let's start with the fact that this is, once again, like Taco Tuesday. Takeo Spikes published a book called Under the Helmet. The, the, the illustration on the front of the book is a clear helmet. So you're not even being original with what it is that you're bringing to the table to Ooh. begin with. Shots out to Takeo for bringing stories and relevance to what we are as football players. By the way, an all-pro pro bowl football player. Who will be here tomorrow okay. on our show? Shots out. Yeah. All right. So Need to sue LeBron. The, the interesting thing. <laughs> wow. How about it? <laughs> <laughs> I just think that he is he is in overdrive with empowering people. I have no, mm. I have no problem with him trying to empower others. His, his school that that he has is is performing at a super high level. The things that he's doing, the the empowerment of his boys to be able to do what they're doing, I have no problem with him enterprising off of what he brings to the table. I'm just a tad bit offended by pulling out a flimsy helmet that looks like a prototype. With, with a 1978, <laughs> 79 face mask frame, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, no type of guts, anything to, to the helmet. Look how flimsy <laughs> that is. That that looks like a penny jar. That looks like what you put your pennies and your, your nickels in. Uh, uh, that is that is as flimsy an attempt <laughs> to say you're doing something. And and the and, and listen, I, I I'm not a LeBron James apologist or a hater. Neither one. I like LeBron James, but. If you're going to pro if you're going to pull out a prototype, at least have a profound story connected to what it is that you're saying. I felt like it was a feeble attempt to sound well, super educated about well, what you're me, presenting. Oh, you thought he sounded to, super educated? I, I, no. Feeble no. attempt. Feeble. Feeble. Huh? feeble. Oh, okay. It was bad. feeble. Um, at best. I, I got to push back at that one. All right, somebody. <laughs> Somebody said that helmet could be some, uh, some at the concession stand. You get your stadium nachos. Yes. <laughs> yes. Popcorn. Yes. yes. Popcorn. <laughs> it wins there. Um, I will push back and say one thing also about the presentation that really struck me is, like, if you're going to do this and you know it's a stretch, but to just do this, 
you got to sound like you know what you're talking <laughs> he did about. Say. The designer went up there and said, and, and we have this cage bar. <laughs> it's what you said, though. When you're LeBron James and your name's mask. attached to it, and, it's going to gain traction. And I love Hawk. I love That's Lil wrong. Hawk. I love Lil Hawk. Have Jerry Rice. Have somebody well, like. I wasn't even talking about Andrew Hawk. Shout out to Columbia and the guy smart and Andrew Hawk is kills it. I'm he not is? going there. Yeah, he went to Columbia. Okay. Man, he, did, he wasn't even he to, to, the Columbia, top of, he went to the top <laughs> of his seat, man. But let me say this. Yeah. What was profound about what they're saying is what Takeo's talking about and what we hear a lot of times. In the, a, a lot of this is about the sports culture. There is a helmet psychology. A lot of women actually bring this up. They say, you know why y'all football players always act up when y'all get out and y'all always doing too much, spending way more money than every other basketball, baseball. Baseball's more reserved. Basketball's just chilling. Y'all know who we are. Football! Ah! You know why they say that? I'm going to tell you why they say that. Because nobody know who you are. Since you're hiding in anonymity, you want to all of a sudden take, do too much. I take offense to that. Well, yeah, I, I take, I'm just telling I you what's a narrative. I take offense to that stereotype. So to, I I, I haven't met those people. I, I'm you sorry. are damn. You, you are not people. one of them. I ain't never but you acted have met up because because I, I was not. Mar Marcel, so, I, I must, so that's I, a narrative out there. I, I think, and this isn't. This is just me keeping it real. I think in my building this summer, mm. there's been four or five NBA players that lived there. We had one on the show. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. No. And, and no offense to any of them. I had to ask who they were. Mm -hmm. Tall guys, black dudes, tatted up. Mm -hmm. Hey, blah blah. I, I don't. You don't know. There's. There's the top echelon of NBA players oh, yeah. that you know on there site. You go. Mm -hmm. Just like the top echelon of football players you know on site. This whole thing that football players are somehow uh, anonymous because they're playing under helmets untrue. and people don't treat them like humans. We all stop. That's bogus. That's not we true, all stop. man. You were recognized, huh? That's not oh, true. Oh, I'm recognized because I'm big. <laughs> I mean, but most but guys that's what NBA always players are. No, no, no. There are six, seven men in the NBA that's going around here. Everybody know. Ain't no It depends on the what team they play knows. for. If you play... Sometimes I'm in the sports world and I got five of them living in my building. I see them. I don't know. That's great, but also there's a generational gap. Look, look, you don't know every 20-some-year-old walking around here. I can't even I watch no. the NBA, it's my job. And I respect that, but if we're going to say, look, top to top, we're the same, correct? Yes. Yes. Middle to middle, are we the same? Not no. The ratio. No, that's wrong. all I'm saying. I bet you by ratio it is. I bet what? you by ratio it's worse. I, I can get, and here's why. Because you have an offense and you have a defense. Dante Hall was never a major part of, of an offense outside of what he did on special teams. And Dante Devin Hall Hester, will walk through the Fox De Hills Mall and nobody will even I, stop that's, that's, him. That's, 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 that's the overwhelming no, no. majority of NBA players. I, and, nah. By ratio. Mar Mar by ratio. I love Marcellus. it. Yes. No, let's just go with stats. Let's go. 4% of the American population is 6 foot 2 or taller. Okay. So they're already... It, the average NBA player is 6 foot 7. They're in a very small window of just human beings. When you see somebody 6'7", it may, that's not the overwhelming majority of... It's their size. You know, you know the big difference, too, though, is the NBA pushes the players, yeah. whereas goes, the yeah. NFL pushes the NFL and, and the not the players. That's the biggest difference where the stars in the NBA, they get pushed. The stars in the NFL, they push the, the NFL. NFL the NFL pushes the difference. stars they want to push. Well, and, and they push who they want to push. Both of you are right. But, and this is my problem with LeBron. Again, trying to... Basically, what he's saying to NFL players, I'm going to make you more like me. And that's not good for business. The NFL has a completely different business model mm -hmm. than the NBA. That's true. And it's Very much so. far more successful than the NBA's model. But for model. the brand, not the personal brand. So that's no, no, where, no, 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 no. For it the brand. It generates more money, and at the end of the day, NFL players get a percentage of the money generated. It's good for the players that business model for football. But if NBA they, players make more money than us. There's less of so them. So he's there's saying less it for the, it's for the brand. Yeah, there them. you go. Yeah, go right. ahead, go ahead. There's, you got there's it. only 15 on the team. There's 53 on the team. We, we get it. We understand the ecosystem. Right. At the same time, we're talking about impact. We're talking about how it affects us, not only in our personal brand, but in how we're getting monetized. And it's a different experience in the NBA. These dudes in the NBA are making 40 million base salary on the court and making 40 plus million off the court, name the football player doing that. And I'm going to tell, tell you why. Never. I'll, I'll wait. tell you why. If people wore cleats to work <laughs> and you yeah. could sell cleats, yeah. 
you'd make that kind of money. These guys have shoe contracts because people buy tennis shoes. Ah, you can't blame you make the LeBron point. So now he's trying to go after the hardware, the equipment, and say maybe if we tweak it, <laughs> we can actually help you guys. <laughs> 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 you I like it, LeBron. If you think Jerry Jones <laughs> is gonna go, oh, we're gonna go sell this Cowboys helmet, we're gonna sell this clear thing. Oh. Get out of here. LeVar Arrington is back. We're joined now by Super Bowl champion linebacker Brady Papinga uh. making his Speak for Yourself debut. Hall of Famer. He won a Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> time now That's for Darnell's right, question baby. of the day. And I am a Hall of Famer, by the way. Darnell, take it away. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Let's move Great to the luck. Browns. We'll kick off their season this Sunday against the Titans. There's been a lot of noise out of Cleveland this summer with big personality stars like Baker Mayfield and OBJ doing everything they can to build the hype. Most people seem to be buying it, even though the team hasn't made the playoffs since 2002. So I want to ask you guys, do you think the Browns will actually make the playoffs this year? I'm going yes. Mm. I think mm. they're going to be a wild card. I got the Steelers winning the division. But I think the Browns make the playoffs. Baker Mayfield plays well. Uh, I'm going to bet that they come up just short. Uh, Pittsburgh's going to be real this year. Let's admit that. Baltimore is going to be good. I mean, you got Lamar Jackson in his second year and feeling more comfortable displaying his full capabilities. You think he's going to make it through the year without getting hit? Oh, he, no, no, no. he's going to get hit. And he's going to get probably knocked out, but we'll get back up. You so. think he's – okay. I, you I'm tell shocked. me. You think they make it? Oh, I, yeah, I love the Browns. And the reason why I love the Browns, Baker Mayfield, OBJ, Jarvis Landry, that's a three-headed monster defensively, is a nightmare. Mm. you got to put two on one of those guys, and that leaves the other guy, whether it's Jarvis or OBJ, one-on-one. -on -one. And so you – Kareem Hunt by mid picking your poison. Mm -hmm. So – you got Chubbs running the ball good in a, in a division where you got to run the ball Garrett, well. So That sounds good. But. Miles Garrett, you don't like him? I love Miles oh. Garrett. I had Miles Garrett in the Under Armour game, work with him all week. I, I love his motor, love what he brings to the table. I like, I like personnel-wise what they bring to the table. But, again, if you're not systematically – healed from what it is that you need to heal from. You cannot use a talent Band-Aid to put over the wound of what the, the systematic... Uh, so what's the systematic under, wound you're talking well, about? Here? Well, I, oh, from starting from the top up, I, I do not think, organizationally speaking, that they're prepared to win. I really Dude, they don't. got John Dorsey. They got, they got Elliot Wolf, Alonzo Highsmith. Guys, I know personally. You, by the way, you good. met when you were in Green Bay. Yes. I don't know if yes. you remember them. <laughs> but if you look good. at their track record, they were, they're phenomenal, man. John Dorsey's with the Kansas City there Chiefs. He's the reason why they had the Benji, Patrick Mahomes. Benji Serrato, uh, different guys Another that came place. to Washington Redskins and, and put together guys like Bruce Smith and, and mm. uh, Deion Sanders and Mark Carrier. And, and you had such – you had the number one and the number two overall pick in the draft, and they still did not make the playoffs. I think reality is is that there's always a trickle down effect, and regardless of your relationship with those guys personally, and I. But their track I think record. That Alonzo Spell. Their track uh, record. Alonzo yeah. Highsmith is a fine man, and he did great things at the University of Miami. But I do not give Cleveland systematically um, stable enough to to actually win with the talent. I, I, that they I have. think the energy of uh, Baker Mayfield. And I just like kind of how quiet OBJ's been during this training. Oh, camp. yeah, that's it. I, I just, a, a well, quiet OBJ means success, right? Work <laughs> that's where we're going work with this. Focus well, well the loud OBJ became OBJ the great. But now the quiet one is the one we're really looking forward yeah, to. Like okay, that. I'm not even dissing any team. This is not a talent conversation. This is a slotting. There are six opportunities. Yep. Yep. Colts, Texans, Ravens, Chargers, Chiefs, Pats. Got to take some people out of there. People are saying the coach, but that's a roster. And Jacoby Brissett may surprise people. Hey, Bro, it's a roster Texans. built around Andrew Luck. Man, what yeah, it's and, built his around injury, and his injury issues. being able to lead that. And missing a year, and they built it around Andrew Luck. Yes. You sure about that? What Absolutely. about Absolutely. So who are you taking out? Chargers? Chiefs, Patriots, no, no, Colts. Man. No, that's three right so there. So all you have is ran three right there. Yeah. Colts may win their division. There's two wild cards. So slides. Texas Ravens? Ah, that's where the conversation Texans gets sticky Texans are me. a little dysfunctional right now. Welcome back, everyone. Santa Whitlock and Marcellus Wiley. <laughs> TJ Hoosman, Zada, and LeVar Arrington are back with us as well. Mm. Let's return to the NFL. I'm good, Santa. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. We are less than four hours and 20 minutes from Santa Claus's sleigh dropping the Green Bay Packers and Chicago Bears down our chimneys. It's Christmas in September. <laughs> you know, dashers and dancers and prancers and divas, comets and stupid and donners and blitzing. Oh, wow. <laughs> but do you recall the most Maybe famous player of all? Stupid. Tom Brady, the six ring winner, had a very shiny glow. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it blows. Mm. I've asked Santa Claus for a new Super Bowl winner. 
Respect to Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and Robert Kraft. I love and respect them. But in the words of Uncle Jimmy, the Patriots have become the socks and draws of Christmas <laughs> gifts. <laughs> Nothing worse than going through an entire football season and unwrapping a Christmas gift of socks and draws. Nobody wants the necessities on Christmas. We want shiny new toys. We want surprises. Socks and draws are the back-to-school gift. When the playoffs <laughs> come, I speak for every football fan, we're tired of Belichick and Brady. Give us Andy and Pat. That's Reed and Mahomes. I wrote a letter to the North Pole asking Roger Goodell to stuff my Super Bowl stocking with the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs haven't played in the Super Bowl in 50 years. The Jackson 5 had the number one song, I Want You Back. Richard Nixon was president. But this show isn't about what we want to happen. It's about what we think will happen. Five hours or four hours before the start of the season, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to win the Super Bowl. I think Big Ben is going to win MVP. The Antonio Brown fiasco is going to be the best thing that's happened to Big Ben Roethlisberger and Mike Tomlin since the Steelers drafted Brown in the sixth round nine years ago. Brown's departure to Oakland has allowed Tomlin and Roethlisberger to remake their partnership and establish a more stable culture. Brown's departure also puts healthy pressure on Ben and Tomlin. They will respond with throwback seasons. Defensively, I expect Michigan linebacker Devin Bush to be a top candidate for Rookie of the Year. The Steelers traded up in the first round to get him. He's going to make an impact immediately. We won't have to wait long to see if I'm right. The Patriots and Steelers meet this Sunday. The Packers and the Bears are just our first gift of Christmas. The main gifts arrive on Sunday. All right. I don't know about y'all, but I went to bed early last night mm. so that today would get here sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Marcellus? That was bad. Yeah, no. that, it was good, though. It was, what do you it, think of my yeah, Super Bowl yeah. pick? Yeah. What that, do you think of my Super Bowl the pick? The Pittsburgh Steelers? Yeah. First of all, you didn't stay in character. Come on, man. I'm sorry. Your voice just <laughs> went back to Jason Whitlock with a I'm damn sorry. beard. I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Beard is gone. Yeah, yeah. Beard Where's is gone. our Emmy? He is not right. coming. Um, <laughs> you say the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to win the Super Bowl, yeah. and I have to push back and say I don't think so. Um, we have to respect what this year is going to look like in difference to last year. Everyone's thinking it's going to be better because of mental makeup and the locker room chemistry, everything. Well, let's talk about on the field, X's and O's. I've been there before when I saw a number two receiver have to make the ascension to a number one receiver and struggled. Going from number two to number one is a big leap in terms of being a receiver. And Stephon Gilmore, Pro Bowl cornerback for the Patriots, even went on record this week and said about Juju being the guy and needing to prove it. We'll see. I don't know. Got to prove yourself every year. Everyone has to. That's the fun part. We'll see if he can prove it. So that's unproven. Like all the other Pittsburgh receivers have done over the past 40 oh, years. Oh, wow. I wish it was that easy. Man, I would have been Bruce Smith. But you know what? <laughs> a little less, a little less, a lot less. Um, let's talk about the fact that their rushing attack, which was second to last last year. And we're talking about James Conner. Have we seen him play 16 games healthy all the way through? No, we haven't. Another leap. And then... I don't want to advance this team just because they got rid of the headache of A.B. There's still some guilty parties who were convicted of their own indiscretions still in that locker room that needs to be Just out of my stocking. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Basically, I'm pushing back against that saying, no, nah, I don't think it's Steelers. Mm. Man, I, I don't believe the Steelers as well. I mean, if this is the case, the Steelers play for the Bengals. Of, oh! Oh! Ain't nobody surprised. Hey, no, hey, hey. you when you... I'm... I'm trying to be as uh, go ahead. I was transparent joking. and I was honest. Joking, and, CJ. No, 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 no. What he just said, Juju's gonna get all the attention. Mm. And as much as you want to say, well, they've produced receivers, those receivers have been pretty good. And they've oh, and, they, and they've also okay. I'm gonna give you a name and see Lyman Swede. You remember him? Oh, I do. They drafted him in the second round. He didn't play well. From Texas, the Steelers. I'm talking drafted yep. him. In, yeah. So they they could have drafted Jordy Nelson that year. They draft Lyman Swede. The guy's got to be able to play. Me, personally, who's going to win the Super Bowl? I'm going with the Rams. They bring the same team back. Mm. They get Cooper Cup back with a big plus in that offense. Great. You get pressure up the middle. The best guy to do that since probably John Randall and Warren Sapp, Aaron Donald. Mm. You affect the quarterback up the middle. Defensively, they're going to be strong. Offensively, they pick. should be much better. Not a bad um, pick. So my, my Super Bowl pick would probably be the Rams and the Chiefs. Not mm. a bad pick. I don't think it's the Steelers, and it pains me to say that because I am a Steelers fan. I always make that a point to say that. Um, 
I you ain't gonna that, say nothing I, to him because he ain't played for the Bengals, huh? I, I think there are some. <laughs> I think there are some some real reasons why I, I'm I'm not gonna go with the Steelers, but I won't waste time on that because I, I think Marcellus did a did an excellent job of that. Mm -mm. I'm a, I'm gonna go with the Chiefs, and I think the Chiefs got very close last year. And and knowing how Andy Reid coaches and the coaching staffs that he's been able to assemble and how they're able to maximize the talent that they bring to the table, um, Mahomes will be Andy's a taking much, a lot of teams to the Super Bowl. Uh, I tell you what, he knows how to win. He knows how to navigate. <laughs> well, I t he gets very close. Gotcha. He gets yeah. very. Hey, and, look, and, and I hope you're right. He's not had to coach out a lot of organizations because he's had a lot of success. Which, by the way, he did take a, a, another team by the Green Bay Packers. You as, got the Chiefs. Uh, you're on I, the got, record. I got the Chiefs. Marcellus, on the how about that? Yes. Let me rain on your pick the way you rained on mine. Uh -oh, oh, okay. Uh -oh. uh, I like the Chiefs as well. Oh. They well, were well, one, they were <laughs> one possession away from being in the Super Bowl, going against the dynastic Patriots. And they had a first-year starting, second-year quarterback. There you go. Huh. So he's going to take a step forward. Then you look at how they drafted. They basically got Tyreek Hill 2.0 because they didn't think they were going to have Tyreek Hill 1.0 at that time. Then you get a full Sammy Watkins. Hopefully that's right. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, whatever toothpaste left in that tube. New defensive coordinator. You got Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badgers out there. Frank Clark, new defensive mindset, scheme, and players. Who are they corners? I didn't like that part. They just gotta stay healthy. They, do that. they just gotta stay healthy. Yeah. All right, look, That's I'm gonna every go good forward. Team. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to our conversations at the top of the show, though. What concerns me about the Chiefs, and look, I hope y'all right, mm. but what concerns me, character does matter at some point, man. And Shady McCoy, Frank Clark, and again, maybe all these guys are innocent and I don't know, and, and but oh. uh, Tyree Hill. I just worry about the culture because I, I saw Marty Schottenheimer put together a team in 98 that I love. I love. They brought Chester McLaughlin in, and I was like, oh, my God, they're going 16-0. and 0. Yeah, I remember. And the character just wasn't right on that team, starting with Chester McLaughlin, and it just never got on track. That's a bit of my concern about the Kansas City Chiefs, just too many guys with off-the-field perceptions of problems. I, I just wonder if the culture is going to be right. Didn't you do this last year with the Rams and all of their personalities and issues and how that wasn't going to work that out? That was about too much money being spent. But it was I, also about Keep Tlaib. It was also about Marcus, Marcus Peters. Peters. Yeah, it, it sounds similar. I wasn't here Yeah, yet. no, I right. When, I when, you, when you win, man, those personalities in that dysfunction, they fall in line when yeah. you win. They're going to win. They, they fall in line. They're going to win. I, yeah. I, I will say this. I do think I've never seen anything like Patrick Mahomes mm. and the kind of excitement and opportunity that everybody knows. Like, man, we got to strike while this kid is rolling like this and has this kind of talent. Yeah. That will build an excitement and an energy. And again, if I'm Tyreek Hill, if I'm LaShawn McCoy, if I'm Frank Clark, these guys know if we go out here and win, no one's ever going to say a word. And they got it. years. Y'all got, got mentioned years. Kelsey either. You got, a, yeah, an elite, you got an elite tight end. That's there. another person. They got a lot of, they got a lot a of pieces. Head. But it's there's true. always one team. That's true. It's going to be Baller. one Chicago Bears last year. No, there's no. always one team that comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, man, I didn't think they were going to be that good. Mm hmm. Two Chiefs. It's going to be the Cleveland Browns. One Everybody Steelers. thinks they're good. <laughs> one Rams. One with the Rams. We'll that right. was a joke right, like LeBron Talmud. With Lock and Wiley, TJ Husmanzada, and Brady Papinga are back. Let's return to the NFL. Sponsored by the Spark Cash Card from Capital One. All right, to Chicago, where Aaron Rodgers and the Packers kick off the NFL season tonight against the Bears after an apparent conflict between Rodgers and new coach Matt LaFleur over audibles. Another Packers legend, Brett Favre, is actually taking his old rival side, saying he hopes the coach doesn't handcuff Rodgers too much. New coach or not, Rodgers will be looking to return to form this year. After a few seasons that have seen his average numbers drop across the board from the unbelievable numbers of his early career when he won his only Super Bowl. All right, the question here is, will Aaron Rodgers return to vintage form this year under his new head coach? Mm. Vintage form. So we saw that, that, that chart have two sides to it. Um, will he return to the first side? closer to that side than what we've seen of late. This is Aaron Rodgers who can not only go scripted, but also can draw it in the dirt and still ball out, especially in two-minute situations. You know Aaron Rodgers would be there. My issue with 
Aaron Rodgers of late has been what he is seeing versus what the scheme is saying. And to have one third of your play calls become audibles because of what Aaron Rodgers is seeing and then not have team success, then that becomes an indictment on what Aaron Rodgers is seeing. Uh, you have a new head coach who doesn't have exactly the longest track record of success in terms of him being a play caller. Tennessee, eh, didn't call plays with the Rams. If this doesn't start fast, this gets ugly. And I doubt this starts fast based on the defenses that they, sh they see early on, especially the first four. So does he return to Aaron Rodgers' level? Of sort. But to the, the core of his greatness, I think a step off. When, when they say vintage form, and when you look at it, last year was his best touchdown to interception ratio. Last year was his second most passing yards he had. He didn't have a winning season as a team. So he's still in vintage form. Will the guys around him turn into vintage form and help him perform better? That, that to me, will be more than anything. Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers. Last year, he had a great year. The team around him, they just weren't very good. So if they perform then I guess Aaron Rodgers will be back in vintage form. Brady, you played yeah. in Green Bay. Yeah, well, it's all about vibe. I'm going to tell you that right now. The vibe with McCarthy last year, a bunch of friction. Because McCarthy, and he's not wrong for wanting to do it, he wanted to call the plays. And the reason why he wanted to call the plays, he didn't want to feel worthless. He wanted to be involved in the game plan. He wanted to be involved in the strategy on the field. But then Aaron, Aaron had evolved to the point to where, yeah, he could make changes at the line of scrimmage. And that conflict is what led to a lot of what you see as the macro problems with the Green Bay Packers. And that's why the organization ended up making that move. And you bring in a guy like, like LaFleur who's more on the level of Aaron because, Mike, you got to remember, he, cut, he basically saw Aaron Rodgers cut his teeth as an infant NFL player. I mean, when Aaron showed up, he literally didn't have, he didn't have the throwing motion he had right now. He didn't have an NFL caliber release, essentially. He had to work on it throughout the offseason. It was a good thing he was with Brett and things of that nature. And so when you have that dynamic where you've seen a guy grow up, he's like your kid. And so there's that father-to-son relationship that he had with Aaron all this time. And then when Aaron's finally old enough to where he can basically take the keys of the car, McCarthy's like, you know what? I don't want to do that. Friction. All of a sudden, LaFleur comes in. LaFleur, they're, they're kind of more equal. You know, it's like two brothers. Working is that going to work? Absolutely. Because Aaron is as smart of a football player as you're going to find. Aaron's yep. going to get him into the right adjustments and the right schematics. The problem with McCarthy was it was always like, okay, I got to – it was friction. It was almost like I have to make up for what he did because I don't agree with that call. Because you also got to remember with audibles, it's just not, okay, I got the whole playbook open to me. It's always based off of personnel groupings. It's, it's basically based off of a compartmentalization of your playbook. So even though you have an audible, it's still only limited to what the caller wants to do in that given situation. So it's going to work. It's going to be perfect because Aaron can take the keys of the car and the fur wants to give them to him. No, I, I push back on that. One, um, in terms of quarterback rating and what Aaron Rodgers was, uh, that was his ninth best season of 14. And let's really subtract TJ the first. said it best, though. No, no, no. He what didn't. is the number one responsibility of a quarterback? To win the damn game. Oh, okay, wait. So you're <laughs> telling me the quarterback wins or loses the game for the team? Oh, a large responsibility, absolutely. A large responsibility. Right, and that's what's on Aaron Rodgers' plate. But let's get but back he's to not him the, individually he, he doesn't first. Term, he doesn't determine whether they win or lose. What he determines, what's the number? Oh, if you I, have I've a been quarterback, in games where the quarterback has actually thrown the – Brett well, Favre can, can say, yes, could, I've lost the game You could go down before. to every single player and, base, and and have a goat or say, okay, you're the reason why I lost. But well, I'll we tell can you stay this. in theory or we could get to well, actual Well, I'm going to talk to you about what is the whole purpose of a quarterback. You hire a quarterback, you're paying him to do – one thing. What What's is that? It? What is that? Score points. Score points and to what? Minimize and, turnovers. And, 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 oh, look at Aaron oh, Rodgers. Oh, oh, look I at, love that. He and, and, has I mean, and, four touchdowns. You just told four me a perfect last to year, Aaron Rodgers. Did you not? Interception. Think did about you that. You just not tell me. Aaron, that's amazing. But guess what? Yeah. He also was sacked third most in his career. So you keep and telling me about the problem. That's the people around exactly. him. Exactly. That's the point. So will Aaron Rodgers return to vintage form? Will Aaron Rodgers do that in an isolated team setting? He didn't even leave vintage form. Huh? He, he didn't never even left leave. it. He's never 25 to 2. I kind of agree with yeah. 25 to 2. 25 to 2. Woo. Come on. Insane. Look, we got other people who've done 16 touchdowns and four interceptions and lost a lot of games. Okay. We're talking 25 so, to 2. So I love the individual statistics, but what it undermined was the overall team success. He did his part. But the quarterbacks get way too much credit and they take way too exactly. much blame. And I'm when the quarterback's not blame. playing well, yeah, they say, are. oh, we got to get him help. Mm -hmm. You get him help and he plays well, oh, man, this quarterback's fantastic. But, Forget the help, but, we just got him. I love you. 
Now we're talking about the Green Bay Packers where Aaron Rodgers plays. Yeah. Do they have enough help? Did you look at the receiving core? Do you? Devontae Adams Devontae is, a is, a is a dog. He I, brought I your core. boy to tears, man. I love y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> Can I say that? core? Go number two. Go number three. Core. See what I'm saying? And y'all act like that. Aaron Rodgers is going to go out there and do everything by himself. What am I What are we asking? Number two. Geronimo. You got hey, Geronimo also, Allison. He's, not, he's, he's nice. Enough. He's very good. You got, you got, you got Graham. Yeah. yeah. Bang you got up, the tight end. I up. know, but he's in a new system. He's going to be utilized a lot differently. I, Last year, they Aaron used him Rogers as is going to be. They used him as a fish out of water, as literally an inline blocker a ton of times. Let's get back Graham to it. Graham is a guy who's a slot receiver that's going to work. Let's get back field. to it. Is Aaron Rodgers going to be good? I said that. He, he's he, going to be damn good. He's never I said lied. that. Is he going to be peak Aaron Rodgers, which is going to translate not only his success but the team's success? No. And if you guys want to argue will. that, here's, please let here's me hear the real. It. Yeah. The reason is is because last year they hardly ran the ball. Okay, and so everything was on the lap of Aaron Rodgers. Now with Lafer, his offense is based off of the zone blocking scheme. Go the the Tennessee God. offense. So he's right? gonna get coming up. Uncle Jimmy's here to help us talk about our approval rating oh, yeah. for Antonio Brown. You now? <laughs> you now? <laughs> I'll get to your big dummy of the day. Marcellus was ridiculous in several blocks. <laughs> I'm damn sure gonna had you think so. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Big dummy of the day. Go to somebody who just sat up here and said, back in my college days, I smoked purple dank. <laughs> and I ain't never came down off the munchies since. That's why I look like this. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, let's move to Antonio me, Brown. Purple dank. Who appears headed for a suspension after <laughs> a reported altercation with General Manager Mike Mayock. John Gruden was asked about the situation today. Mm. Mm. John, is uh, Antonio Brown been suspended? I'm not going to get into any of that stuff right now. We'll uh, have a official announcement later, but uh, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any other questions. Did you see the incident yesterday after practice? Like I said, I'm not, uh, not going to get into all of it. Obviously, uh, he wasn't here today, and uh, when we have some information for you, we'll, we'll give it to you. Mm. All right, Marcel, so we're going to have an announcement later today. Mm. Sounds like the Raiders, they cutting bait with A.B.? Yeah, it's a wrap. You could tell. I mean, you could just feel the gravity, the heaviness, and, and the fact that they're postponing to make this announcement. It's not going to be good for A.B., so it's time. I mean, 52 other guys witnessed a fight between the general manager and the player. The player usually loses that one. Uncle Jimmy, uh, you have any thoughts? Should the Raiders cut A.B.? Done with me? Yeah, told N you. No, hell no, they shouldn't cut him. <laughs> Why not? They should cut his internet provider. <laughs> that, that's who I blame for all these problems he's having. I blame the internet provider. <laughs> See, I can tell everybody out there what happened yesterday. What happened? First of all, he should have been studying his playbook. <laughs> but he wasn't. No, 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 he was out here roaming the, roaming the streets of social media <laughs> and got strung out. <laughs> He saw LeBron James talking about the glass helmet project. <laughs> and you know, A.B. been having helmet problems. We just know that. <laughs> you know, he felt like the heavens had opened up and somebody was looking at life through his bloodshot eyes. <laughs> That's so funny. But you know how your people do. <laughs> you only get half of the story. You don't tell the whole story. Mm. He just got half of the story of the, gl of the glass helmet project. <laughs> Started tweeting out, I'm down with LeBron James and the Glass Pipe Project. <laughs> now the boy out there stuck on stupid, <laughs> sitting on, wait a minute, lost somewhere between Tyrell Biggles and Pookie from New Jack City. <laughs> okay? Stuck on, wait a but minute. he wants somebody's sympathy. So, <laughs> so yeah. he's following LeBron James and the Helmet Project. I, I got it. I kind of mm -hmm. like that. Seriously, yeah. seriously though. Serious, the, Mr. Do, Biggums. Yeah, <laughs> let's cut the character. Do you think A.B. should be cut? Cut the character. Do I think he should be cut? Yeah. Hell no. That's really? what he want. First of all, man, honestly, we need to lose all jokes. Hey, man, listen, let me tell you something, man. Oh. I come out here to Fox every day, okay. dress up like a damn fool and crack jokes trying to get $150,000. <laughs> this fool done set up and thrown away $30 million. <laughs> and you come and you think I'm going to give you some sympathy, <laughs> some respect? <laughs> Hell, I tried to put on a blue mustache. I didn't make none of the money you made. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, you left a Super Bowl contending team mm. and found another team stupid enough to pay you money, and you blew that. 
That's a lot of truth in what you say. Hey, you know what? What do they say? Let, let me tell you this, boy. They, they, they say you got to be stupid as hell to get fired on your off day. <laughs> you know what our people say? Boy, your heavily pigmented ass done found a way to almost get fired on your off day, A.B. <laughs> I'm mm. sorry, man. Mm. I, I ain't giving you no sympathy. I ain't giving you nothing. What are you teaching your little, your, your young kids, your mm. athletes? Where's your word at? Did you sign a damn contract? What is your word for, man? Mm. Your word ain't worth a fart in the wind. <laughs> you care about yourself and your $30 million. Get your ass off my team, man. Mm. I tend to agree with that. I don't have a lot of sympathy for A.B. Mm. Uh, earlier in the show, obviously, uh, uh, LeVar tried to express a lot of sympathy. And yeah. None of us was really feeling that, man. Right. They 30 million at 30 years old. Oh, he's going to regret all of that. I don't care how much you got. You could do that for the next generation. Generation after that. Come on, A.B. Come all on. All right. Man. So, A.B., uh, my oh. approval rating Even for him. Even bad name. Dropped his job <laughs> performance to a zero. Oh. Dropped his all-time greatness three points to right. a 15. Yep. He's out of my Hall of Fame. Mm. Uh, character goes to minus two, uh, mm. down from minus one. Authenticity, I give him an extra point. Okay. 28, dumpster fire. Yeah, I got him at a 49. Scout team had to drop him. Job performance, you gave 30 mil back. What is you, ignorant? Uh, also, all-time greatness. <laughs> You can't be that great to me. You got to drop there if you give him money back. That's just craziness. And what's wrong, A.B.? The character got to take a hit as well. But I got him at Scout Team. All right, so the internet agrees with me. 87% Damn. dumpster Damn fire. Woo. That's the largest landslide we've ever had.